So this is a pretty comprehensive review of an external tire pressure monitoring system or TPMS for short. And it's that particular model, you can see it uh, like that. I'm not affiliated to the, with any of the company. This is an unbranded, unbranded product. I bought it with my own money and I've had one of these. This is a brand new device, but I've had one of these for three and a half years and decided to do a, a fairly in-depth review on that. Was, what are the positives? What are the negatives? Uh, it looks like that. Uh, where can you buy it? What to look out for? Uh, stay tuned. So this is the external tire pressure monitor system or TPMS for short and it comes in a nice uh, sturdy box uh, made in China. Um, let me open it to see what's inside. So you've got a caution that is normal for the display, uh, not no display. When you first run it you have to turn on the display. You've got a nice description of uh, pretty much all the options uh, in English, how to replace batteries, where to turn them the different options and so on but i'll cover those in, in in this review so what you get in the box you get the main unit or the display unit it's not really a main unit um, and i've already opened it so the unit looks like this it's fairly I'll, I'll give the description of what the sizes of those are so all the the components and the description like um, dimensions are given in the description below so that's the unit you've got three buttons uh, at, at the bottom You've got two USB ports, so you can you can charge uh, devices, and you've got a turn uh, at the back. This is for two things. Uh, this is with a with a sticky tape at the bottom, so you can uh, let me undo that one. So you stick this to the dash dashboard. This clips on top, so it doesn't move. And this goes at the back, so you you screw this up. I'll show you how this works. So this can stay. Oh, it's the other way around. Uh, stay like that and you can turn it around where you're facing so you can you can see it uh, one additional thing and let me cut this uh, one additional thing inside and then I'll uh, show the rest of the, the stuff one additional thing is that which you can stick in there and this can go in a, in a, in a cigarette lighter or the, uh, of the car so it can stay like that uh, you can so you can put it on a different size or so the second this is kind of a second um, in addition to that also you get a cable and I'll show the cable and what, what they mentioned this is so I've got two of these plastic uh, and I'll show how it is for uh, undoing the, the sensors removing the battery and replacing the battery so you've got a wrench there for these uh, security nuts uh, these are five so you only need four but one is for reserve to kind of secure them and to be more difficult to uh, to steal those but I think this is really a, a joke rather than that much of a security so and you also get the four sensors um, so the sensor looks like this screw this on the on the tire valve and it kind of has a sensor for temperature and sensor for pressure so it measures uh, how much the pressure is in, in PSI and of course in, in bar and uh, uh, the temperature and that's actually quite good uh, so first of all what is the weight of those so let me put the scales on so that's in in grams and I'll put the four sensors on uh, just to kind of the combined weight so it's roughly about 42 43 grams so it's each of these sensors is about 10.5 grams so I know that's quite a bit 10 and a half grams each uh, but I've had so I, I, I have an old one of these devices that I bought three and a half years ago uh, it's exactly the same apart the caps are uh, black rather than the silverish color and I've uh, changed the tire several times during these three and a half years and I've never really had vibration or the tires get thrown off vibration in any speed uh, due to the sensors these 10 grams per uh, per tire so i've had it the, the original device for three and a half years that's why i decided to do a review of that one because um, i've had it for quite a while i haven't really had to do anything not to replace um, for these three and a half years not to replace the uh, the battery not to replace the o-ring or anything this is not enough uh, to cause vibrations i never i one what one could do of course have this 
and uh, if you're changing tires, uh, help them balance with the sensors. Uh, but I've never really done that and it's still, uh, I don't really have any vibration. So next thing is the cable. Let's see how it looks. It looks slightly different than my old one. Uh, it's quite long and I'll measure it now and I'll tell you how, uh, how long it is. The cable is uh, three and a half meters long uh, up to here. It's about three and a half meters. So it's quite long and you can route it around the car, around the windscreen and whatever you want just to hide it. Uh, not to show it. I don't really like those with the solar panels uh, because if I keep the car in the um, sunshade and they have a battery and might not work, I really like it when it's uh, with a cable. Uh, so it's got this interface and basically just plugs in um, and just plugs in that side. And of course, if you want to have this in the cigarette lighter, uh, this also plugs in there and uh, that's the kind of the length uh, there. So this is slightly different design, different of these. These are fairly the same whenever you see um, this monitor and you, you see uh, how, it, how it lights and these sensors, they're all really the same. Uh, there is no difference whatsoever. They are different variety just basically by the cheapest uh, of these. I'll have a, a few in the link if you're interested in buying that. Uh, but basically buy the cheapest possible rather than uh, looking at different. Uh, my old one said a Ryak here, but they're exactly the same. This is just uh, nameless. It doesn't have a brand at all, but they're exactly the same. This one, that's what I was saying. This one is slightly different. It has a push button, so you plug it in uh, to turn it on. You need to, to press the button and to turn it off if your car doesn't stop the electricity, so not to drain the battery, so you basically have to turn it off. Uh, this is it for the, for the box. Next thing is you have two of these, which are... Let me open them. Two of these plastic, which are for... Um, undoing the, 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 the battery on, on these devices, basically unscrew them uh, to unscrew the battery and of course replace the battery. So how do you replace the battery on these? I've never really had to replace the battery and what kind of battery is inside. Uh, it's fairly easy and for my older device, this TPMS, I haven't really replaced the battery for three and a half years. So they last very long time and I've been using it constantly. I mean, I haven't not using it. I've been using it quite a lot. Um, so first of all, there is a, I'm not too sure if, if uh, this, this has zoomed. There is a, there's a ring here, which you need to undo, um, a security ring kind of uh, like that. So you kind of unclip it, well, unclip it, but it's not too easy. There you go. You just unclip it uh, from that side. Uh, it's like that it goes there. Next thing, uh, there are several grooves in there. So one of these devices you can you can put in there and kind of lock it in place. And then this, of course, the other one uh, uh, on that one, you just lock it in and then rotate uh, counterclockwise or anticlockwise until it kind of rotates. So I don't need, really need that. I can just unscrew it from here. And that's what's inside. Uh, that's the that's the plastic uh, cap that holds it. There is an O-ring here as well, uh, just to keep water and dirt uh, inside. And this is the battery. In there, you kind of uh, push it to come out. Let me see what battery is there. So the battery is CR1632, uh, 3 volts, uh, CR1632, and that's how you can uh, you can replace the battery and put it back on. Uh, screwing it is um, pretty easy, same way, not really uh, any difficult. Uh, put that inside in this plastic groove and then that on top. And then just screw it. There we go. And put this is a 
a security pin. So basically, if this starts unscrewing, it, it doesn't stop it. There is a, a plastic pin uh, here that kind of stops it. Um, so you have to uh, slip it on. So if it starts undoing, um, this groove here stops it from, from, from undoing. And that's it. Um, that's how you can replace the battery on these devices. But again, I haven't really replaced this battery for three and a half years. So I suspect that's actually um, quite all right. I haven't even uh, needed to replace the, um, the O-ring or anything. So one additional thing, uh, not only for replacing the, bat uh, the, the battery, but because you can lose these if, if you put them anywhere. So one side, this is for screwing, but you can also put them, put them together. They have uh, this groove and, and, and these grooves on the side. So you can put them together, lock them in and they stay like that. So it's a bit uh, more difficult to, to lose them. Ah, it's a nice touch to be able to kind of put them together and just throw them in uh, somewhere. So this is my old unit uh, that I've had for three and a half years. Uh, looks like that is exactly the same actually. Uh, there is no difference, as I said. One it says Ryak and the other one <laughs> says nothing. They're both exactly the same. There is there is no really no difference. Um, so that's my old unit. So how do you stick this on? So you unplug this, unscrew this though. You unscrew this cap at the, at the back and then you can take this uh, ball um, outside. So then you uh, put this on and then screw it back on. And of course tie it so this um, to stay uh, as you want, uh, like that. Uh, so that's that's my uh, old unit. Let me see what it says. Probably about the same, uh, same thing, just slightly, um, slightly different. Uh, they're, they're exactly the same. I mean, there is no difference. It's just that it's kind of branded Rayak. Uh, with the other some branded uh, same thing. So what I said, the, the end is quite different between the two. Uh, depends where you buy it from. So my old one had this. Um, uh, it's just a it's just a pin. There is nothing. There is a small uh, LED there. Blinks and it doesn't blink. It's just red when it's plugged in. With the new one, uh, it has this button uh, that you turn on and off. Well, it's probably a bit better than than the old one, you just have to unplug it or if your car switches off electricity, then it's absolutely fine. Uh, but um, that one has uh, the button. And the other thing is you just glue it on and um, stick it on, on the dashboard anywhere uh, where you like. Also, the old unit is compared to the new one. Uh, this is completely black. The cap is is black rather than uh, silver, but it just depends what what you buy. The the locking mechanism is the same, and everything's exactly the same. It's just that this has this Ariac there. The other one does um, doesn't have anything. That's my old system. It's pretty much the same, not really different. So just buy basically when you see these devices, which looks like that. Just buy the cheapest possible that you can find rather than looking if it's branded on branded they're exactly the same. I mean, what does it really measure this uh, TPMS? Uh, so first of all, it, it, it can alert for high, high temperature. It blinks and produces an audible sound. Uh, also can alert for high pressure. Uh, again, with blinking and uh, audi audible sound like an alarm alert for low pressure to show if it loses a signal uh, for one of these um, sensors start kind of blinking one of the sensors but that that's very rare it has happened two or three times while i had it for three and a half years so it doesn't really lose uh, the signal it can alert you for low temperature for low battery in these sensors also shows now show this but i'm just saying the now because I otherwise might forget. It also shows you how much voltage does the car battery produce, which is quite useful. I mean, you can see when it's charging, my car usually shows between 14.3 and 14.2 volts. So I know the battery is actually working and charging, the alternator is working. So that's really quite useful. It's in the middle of the screen. Of course, the pressure 
uh, of the tires in PSI and bar and the temperature of the tires in, in Celsius, degrees Celsius and in, in Fahrenheit. Uh, you can also exchange the tire sensors, the tire location, but you can just swap them. It's a, the same thing. Uh, but if if you swap the sensors, you have to tell the the device which which way they are. But that that's absolutely fine. Uh, so it's um, the frequency forty three uh, four three three point nine two megahertz uh, that it operates between the sensor and uh, the device. The minimum the minimum that you can detect is zero bar or, or zero psi to eight bar or 116 PSI. So that, that's quite high. I, I, I don't know, I don't really have that much high pressure just to test it if you can detect eight bars or 116 PSI. Working humidity 100%. I've never seen it, I've been in water and so on. I've never really had any problem. It doesn't really go off. The temperature that it works is between minus 40 and plus 85 degrees. So it works even in, in the very cold uh, weather. I mean, that's it. So um, there is... Um, let me show because in the car it might be a bit more dark so there is a set button in order to set all these um, parameters so you can set a minimum uh, pressure or minimum temperature and uh, if the tire goes below that say for example your average type or your normal tire pressure is 2.5 bars you can set it to two bars and say if my tire pressure really falls to that level uh, have a, an alarm and, and start blinking in order to set this, uh, there is a set button in the middle that you have a, a long hold. Uh, you hold it for long and then this goes into a setting mode. And then with these arrows, there are two arrows left and right that you can switch between uh, different parameters. So this is it. It's not too bright in during night. This is not too bright. You cannot set the brightness. That's the only thing that is missing. But the brightness is not too high. You can view it during really a lot of sunshine. If the sun is out there, you can still see it. And during night, it's not too bright uh, to kind of dazzle you. So next thing uh, is to fit uh, these sensors in the in the tire valves. So the tire valve, I've got a cap. Of course, you've got um, one of these uh, security nuts uh, to screw on uh, before screwing the sensor. Maybe screw that. Inside. Next is the four sensors, so they are labeled, um, so this is left, right, LR, I don't think you can see it, uh, this is um, right front, so RF, and this is LF, left front, and the last one is RR, or uh, right rear, so I need, uh, this is left front, so the left front and basically just screw it on. There will be a bit of a air escaping once you tie it, but that's absolutely fine. And just screw it uh, and that's it. It doesn't escape anymore. Um, next thing is to tie this security nut and I'll, I'll push the, the valve slightly and then uh, turn this uh, nut kind of counterclockwise and then you tie it as much as you can kind of to secure it so if you see I'm trying to push it so basically you tie it I mean of course now if you want to undo it you can't quite undo it but I mean if you really because this is if you tie, if you turn it to undo it, that gets uh, the the small security nut gets tighter there. But what what's stopping somebody to seal it, steal it with pliers? You can just undo that one uh, and then take it off. It's not really uh, that difficult to undo. But I've had this and I've stopped everywhere. Well, somebody might steal them. They're not too cheap, but probably nobody will bother because you need the device as well. So nobody will really just. Uh, replace those. So this is one and then I'll put the next uh, the same way. So I've plugged it in uh, in the cigarette lighter. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether you press this on. I haven't switched on the car. Uh, so this is the first time I'm plugging it in. Um, so let's see this warning because I already put the sensors. Let's see if this gives warning or doesn't display anything. Let me switch on the car just to see how this will. I'm trying not to shine. Uh, there's too much light. Um, 
So let's uh, push in the button. Yeah. I mean, let me turn it around so it's blinking because it hasn't been set. But it's really quite nice display. Uh, I don't know, these look kind of uh, orange, but they are white. These, these um, are whites probably from the light. So if you hold set to enter in the menu. So how do you change uh, the settings? So um, to enter in the menu, one long press of the of the middle. I'm not too sure if you can see it. One long press in the middle, which is the set, and there are two arrows uh, to go left and right. One long press. So I'm the the PSI and bar menu. So if I want to change this, I press on the set one short time, and then you can change to with the arrows to PSI and bar. So bar is uh, blinking. So if you want to save this, just one short press on the uh, on the set then with the arrows i can go to the next one which is the uh, whether it's a celsius or fahrenheit same thing third one is um, uh, to alert uh, the driver uh, when the pressure becomes higher than than this setting and this is three uh, bars uh, currently showing bars uh, so next one is uh, if the tire pressure any of the tire pressure drops to below a certain set value so if i want to change that i'll hold the uh, just press the set once uh, and this will start blinking so i can increase it to 2.2 for example and then if i press one set uh, it will it will save it uh, next one is the what is the maximum temperature before alerts you so it's currently 65 degrees so you can change that uh, so this just shows if the sensors are on. So if I remove a sensor, this this won't be on. It will be just um, uh, arrow uh, these uh, uh, arrows rather than um, on. So I've got four sensors there. Uh, not much you can do. It just shows you whether they're on or off, or they're synchronized and so on. Next is uh, these are the positions of the sensor so zero one two three and four so if you swap two tires you might wanna if you don't wanna unplug the sensors and swap the sensors as well then put it again uh, to the positions so you can change uh, these so if you press it once uh, then i can uh, say this is number four uh, set it uh, and then this swaps again with four so it straight away has swapped uh, let me move it again because i don't wanna so this is, is is a fifth sensor so if you have a fifth sensor which is on the spare tire you can also buy an additional one so this uh, comes with four sensors we can buy uh, additional ones so let me move this one to uh to one and this automatically goes to uh goes to four and uh, and the spare tire so that's how, how you can uh, swap sensors if you want and it goes then goes back to the PSR bar menu uh, cycles again. So these are all the menus inside. So if I one long long hold press, it will go back uh, in the menu. And of course, I don't really have uh, anything showing now because um, I need to just drive a little bit, literally a few minutes uh, on the in the instruction says 10 to 15 minutes in order to pick up the sensors and get. Uh, synchronize and start showing everything yeah but that's it so um now i really need to drive uh, a little bit couple of minutes just to see uh, to pick up the sensors and and then show you how uh you can change uh, different things so I literally uh went out for two minutes and uh it picked up straight away the sensors so you can see 2.7 bars 2.7 2.7 all around so it's a bit uh kind of 18 degrees 16 degrees uh uh, the tires uh, so I don't know why the camera is not picking so in the middle it's yellow where the voltage of the battery the Celsius are also yellow these numbers are white and it's quite nice actually but the camera picks it kind of uh, off uh, green kind of bluish it's actually quite nice so the bars uh, go by 0 0.1 so it goes 2.7 2.8 the resolution is 0 0.1 bars uh, with the PSI is 1 PSI uh, the degrees is by one degree and it's not entirely accurate it's plus minus zero 1.5 degrees you can see these are 18 these are 16 okay at the back could be slightly lower uh, but the resolution is plus minus one two degrees to, to change the settings there are three buttons so set is in the middle and two arrows left and right 
Uh, so if you long long press the set, it will go into the menu. There we go. So now I can change the bar and PSI. So one press of the set again. Let me see which was the set. It will start uh, blinking whichever it's currently. Currently is the bar. So I can press it the arrow one side. It will go to PSI. One press of the set will save it. One long press will come out of this menu. And nothing is showing because uh, you need to switch it on and then back off again and it will uh, display in PSI. So this is 39, 39 and the Celsius. Uh, so one thing, this is not too bright during the night, so it doesn't it doesn't dazzle, uh, but it's, it's quite nice during the sunlight and sunshine. You can still see it, but it's not too bright during the night, it's somewhat uh, quite a good uh, LCD display. These settings will be remembered next time when you switch off the car overnight or plug this out, go somewhere. These settings will be remembered, the minimum maximums and so on, the PSI or whatever, they will be remembered. One thing though, uh, once it starts, once it's picked up the sensors and you're running, it's absolutely fine. I mean, it's instantaneous uh, sense these measurements. The thing is that if you leave it overnight, so the next day, it's not straight away, it will pick up the sensor straight away, but the values are not transmitted that quick. You need one or two minutes uh, for the car to be rolling in order for the uh, change, the settings to be changed. So once this is happening, you start going along with the car, then it's absolutely fine. The, the, the changes are kind of instantaneous, but the first time that has been shut down, let's say you've shut down the car for half hour or something, or the display has been shut down, then it needs one or two minutes to pick up the values. One thing, I mean, this is exactly the same unit. So if you see this display anywhere, just buy the cheapest possible because they're exactly the same devices, it's just different numbers and letters, whatever, just buy the cheapest device that you can find. I have a few that I have linked from Amazon or, or eBay, just buy the cheapest possible and it's the same unit, they produce exactly the same, uh, it's exactly the same unit. So yeah, when uh, I mean, when I said uh, the colors, uh, I could this this kind of uh, greenish, the uh, 2.7, the, the bars and the pressure, but if you tilt it a bit more with the camera, there is a reflection. So these are actually white, uh, these are yellow, uh, they're not picked up fairly well it kind of when you move it around the camera kind of changes color this is a bit more blue than than is shown on camera but at least these are uh, these are shown as white so the middle is blue as is that one on the camera this is a bit more uh, accurate this is a bit more yellow uh, it's not quite uh, it doesn't quite pick it up but uh, that's how uh, it looks like so for the button i mean let me switch off the the light so for the button uh, i'll press it just I mean, there is a bit of a light, a bit of a reflection on that particular uh, model. My old one and some others will be just uh, plug in and one single LED here. So that is a bit, I mean, it doesn't seem too distracting, but while you're driving, uh, one can probably rotate it different ways not to shine because it doesn't, it only shines uh, that side. So I'll put a sticker on top, something to uh, not to be that shine during the night. I mean, you can you can swap it around so it doesn't really um so it only goes let's say that direction somewhere but driving during the night there might be a, a bit of a red uh there but that's not too bright so one other thing uh that i wanted to say so the voltage for the for the battery or the uh, how much voltage is in the battery or the alternator produce it's in the middle it's really accurate. I've measured it with a multimeter, uh, but to be aware that if you have switched on the USB plug, so device that has been switched on in the USB, this will only be entirely too accurate. It will drop a few uh, millivolts, so it won't be entirely accurate. So if you plug something else, so it's not. Um, if I plug in somewhere else in the car, this device, this doesn't really drop. It's, it is fairly accurate. Only if you plug it in the device, so you have to be aware that the voltage might not be entirely accurate if you uh, charge devices but if nothing is plugged in it's pretty accurate the other thing is that uh, it, it currently because i haven't started the car is 12.5 volts but while it's running is roughly about 14.3 14.2 volts depending if i have the headlights on or off then it drops like a 0.1 volt or so so let's see how quickly it responds to currently it's i've uh, put it on uh, and now i'll remove uh, i'll go out of the car and remove uh, the front right sensor and see how quickly this 
uh, gets picked up. There we go, literally, and uh, does the sensor. So if you want to switch off the alarm, just press the set. And I can press it once more. And it, it's blinking. And it was showing the symbol for, for low tire pressure. Of course it's low tire pressure, I mean it's atmospheric pressure. But it was literally, if it's rotating, it will be quicker than, than uh, a stationary. Uh, but... Um, so you can see how how quick it was. It's less than uh, less than five seconds uh, to pick it up, and I'll put it now to see uh, how uh, quickly it will recover. There we go. Put it in. Shows uh, 2.5, so he could drop uh, slightly from uh, uh, the turning it in, the, to turning it in. Uh, some some air uh, kind of escaped, it wasn't too much. But uh, that's how quick it responds. It's, it's fairly uh, quick to respond. So, it, but when he's driving, it's, it's it's quicker than and then going. Let me switch it off the car and then switch it back on again to see if this 2.5 stays here. It will it will be uh, 2.5. Well, I tried to cover everything that I was thinking, uh, but if you have really any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll, I'll answer if I have forgotten something or you have another question, let me know and, and, and I'll answer those. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, hopefully that's useful to someone. Uh, let me know for any comments. Uh, thank you for watching.